So right now we're um, rolling out of Brownsville, Tennessee. Uh, we left Nashville a little after noon time, probably 12, 30, 1 o'clock, got down here. Um, had an amazing experience at the minefield and the uh, Anthony's Master Barbershop Museum. I'm not even sure where to start. That We just experienced uh, two totally unique, like in and of themselves things in one place, maybe more than two. Three. Three, Three. okay. Three. <laughs> so we just took a trip through the minefield, which was... A mine trip. <laughs> <laughs> the Billy Trip minefield, which was a mine trip for sure. Um, and that was its own separate thing, and that's what we I think we both thought we were coming for. Yes, absolutely. Um, but it is definitely not what I left with. I would prepare. I was prepared for some. I don't know, like a bigger presence. I was not prepared for that because it sounded like you, it was unavoidable. You know, like as soon as you took the exit or got into town or something like that, it was right in front of you. And, it but, sounded like it was gonna. Like I envisioned almost like skyscrapers, like that tall and, and kind of overtaking or overlooking or overwatching, however you want to say it, the town. And that's not how. That's not how I felt about that at all. No, no, not at all. The description of an oversized erector set is definitely <laughs> appropriate. That's been used way more than once to describe that place. I don't want to go through and not spend more time on kind of the artistic side, because I guess that's Absolutely. where my head and heart goes. Of the minefield, though, I, you could see how you could get lost in it, that starting something like that if you're if you are truly of the artistic mind frame and you yes have a vision and you see an end goal or you don't see it and you're working towards it until you're finished and you don't know when finished is um that is that is absolutely what is occupying billy Tripp's mind and soul and his hands every single day what was really crazy to me looking at it was it actually had symmetry and it actually had like a composition to it and there is one significant part where Billy built in memory of his mother and father and then stopped so in all reality there's at this point there's two different projects occupying the same property because there's the memorial to his parents and then everything ends and there's a gap and it's not connected but the next part of the sculpture begins this the the thoughtfulness and as random as it looks it actually does have some serious definition in all the chaos and i'm sure everybody finds their own way to interact with it but you could stare at that thing six feet off the ground eight feet off the ground and stare into the sky for days and find all different kinds of things and ways to connect those those pieces of metal together to create a, a story that, that talks to you about everything it's preserved now by as it like you were saying that they had already done the work yeah it's i think it's it's like left we can probably look this up a little bit more it's left of the town um so after billy dies he's going to be buried on the property and um there's already a spot for him there so it will it's always going to be kept and maintained and those kind of things um, is our understanding of it and you know I, I'm sure if you live there if you talk to different people it's just like everything else you're gonna get various opinions on it what an incredible piece that I, I did I didn't think it was an eyesore at all I looked at it as an, an incredible work of art Sea of sun, sunflowers. Okay. These sunflowers are going to start right here, go all the way to the next street, down on the end. But I plant them every like every three weeks apart because in the fall, you know, in the fall, when the birds start migrating, 
They stop out here for yeah. two weeks. It, the whole thing covered with birds. And what they do, they show up at 5.15 in the evening, and at 7.30, they all just fly up and go that way. And they repeat that for like two weeks. So what I'm doing when they come this year, all of this can be transformed into sunflowers. Wow. So when they show up, they can get closer to the people, because people be standing on the other side watching. And, and I do bird shows on social media. So I show people when they coming in, when they leaving out, it'd be so many, they come from all directions. Wow. I, we, we left, I think we came in thinking the minefield is the main attraction here and we want to kind of see this side gig museum. I mean, I think that's how it was in my mind. And maybe meet this person that runs this museum and barbershop. Yes, it's a combo. And, but I left there feeling like Anthony Turner was the reason why you went to that place in general. Um, what Billy has done with the minefield and his tribute to his parents is no doubt artistic and meaningful and you know a coping mechanism for a, sure definitely a coping mechanism but anthony is the face of all of it and the 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 soul that is in that entire place is resides in him the, the whole connection with him and billy is that billy's father was the one who was instrumental in helping anthony establish his barber shop on the property you, you we didn't meet Billy. I'm sure that maybe some people do, but he, he seems to be a more private person. So you don't really meet him. Anthony is who you meet, who tells the story. He's kind of the the living history of the place. So I think some of the stories he told and the way he got from point A to point B with the museum was a lot of my favorite parts of the experience. Somebody gave him butterflies or he bought butterflies. I, there's no telling. Right. Uh, butterflies came into the museum and they oversee and protect the whole museum and then they hold it all up one night in the middle of sleep he woke up and realized that every single thing in the museum was connected and he needed to physically represent that so he has put connected what paper. I can only imagine is thousands of feet of fishing line connecting everything in the whole museum and uh, hopefully you can see it on the footage hopefully you can hear me with as rough as this road is i think one of the coolest things he said that really stood out to me is that if one part of the museum falls if a pitcher falls or if something comes off a shelf and they're all connected it's the responsibility of the rest of the pieces in the museum to hold them up and to support them and you know, we felt like that was a really strong representation of society as a whole. So there's a lot of different things that came out in a very, very eclectic mix and collection of totally random pieces of American life that were captured in a thousand square foot space that was, he described as three different museums and a barbershop all in one place. So yes. um, it was a lot to take in. Because it's not just about what you saw, it's about what you heard as soon as you walked in. There's all kinds of music playing. It's literally from floor to ceiling. Every single space in that little building is completely full. And it all has a place and he knows. If, yes, where if, it goes. if anything moves, if anything slides, he knows it. I am kind of klutzy by nature if you know me. And as I stepped out of the last bit of one of the rooms, I accidentally kicked something on the floor and I almost had a heart attack because I did not want to mess up anything in his museum. And when I confessed to him what I had done because I, I didn't want it to be in the wrong place and him to be upset, he said, oh, well, that was, that was meant to happen. That was meant to be there. There's something in the museum that represents every single state and he as soon as you start talking to him he finds out where you're from and and you know tells you like there's like he told us there was something from louisiana and i won't spoil it for you in case you go to the museum but indeed there is something from louisiana in the museum 
and I'm sure you'll see on the footage, it's pristine. This isn't oh, like yes. some junk collector's garage that you wander through and you hope you find something that yeah. you identify with or speaks to you. There is documentation of history, presidencies, developments in technology. It all depends on how you look at it and the, the way you view it. But he must dust. <laughs> I mean, I want that man in my hourly. house. Hourly, I don't it is know. So it, it's, it's really just it's something else. And then there's an operating barber shop in there with his chair. He is a master barber. Yes. And one of the things that got him from point A to point B was his dedication to the craft of being a barber, and that connected him to Oprah Winfrey's dad. I mean that you just have to go. I have made it a point in my life to meet as many people as I can and shake as many hands and hug as many people. And I have, I can honestly say I have never met anyone that is anything close to that kind of person. So definitely if you're in the area, that is a once in a lifetime opportunity. He keeps a log of everyone that goes. You can follow it on Facebook. Definitely go go check it out go go meet the man behind the stories that we're telling you because it is a it's a, an experience you will not regret Down went around. we did we did so the three are black history some progress that was made here maybe documented a little bit of minefield and some music and elvis uh -huh. is that the three or wow how do you break them up we meet the, the, uh, the uh, you, session. You were saying there's three museums in here, so I was wondering uh, uh, how you see them. No certain way to, I really had no certain way of breaking it up. Okay. Uh huh. It, it, it was just how fame was arranged to make it three museums. Gotcha. So notice, even though I have the every session, I still brought in others. So yeah. I didn't just want nothing to be about every session and okay. Right, right. Yeah. So, so that way I could. Make it three museums. Yeah. So it was just my way of doing it. No, I love it. <laughs> I think my favorite part is that with all the fishing line, there's so many pieces not connected to something yet. So I, uh -huh. I know you're a long way from being done. Yeah, I'm still working on it. Because uh -huh. there's a lot of things not connected uh -huh. yet. Yeah, yeah. Just, That's why I use the word, notice what I say when I'm talking. I say it don't supposed to fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once I finish it, I can say, but to be honest with you, it haven't been tested. So that's why I'm careful what I say. So why I'm talking, <laughs> so somebody said, boom, then I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the other prog progress. <laughs> you the first one noticed that too. Very observant. He pays attention to everything like that. <laughs> Very so can we go in, the, we can't go in the minefield. Yeah, uh-huh. We can't. Uh -huh. Long as you got my permission. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I do all the tours. Oh, and I can go with y'all back there. You want me to? Yes. Uh, y'all do it on y'all. Hey, own. if you're going to lunch, we don't want to hold you up. Oh, no. My lunch ain't that, ain't that type of lunch. Okay, okay. <laughs> so the discussion right now is all about barbecue. Because John T. did not steer us wrong. Yeah. Helen's was everything a barbecue place should be. Everything. Barely legible sign, completely indescript building. Yes. It's Wouldn't know if it was there if you were not looking for it. There's no way you would stop there. Smell it before you see it. Absolutely. And no frills, nothing fancy at all. Just. You had your own self discovery. I appreciated. What? what your baloney. Oh my gosh. I've. I, I am a fan of bologna, but I have never had bologna that tasted like that. I actually like the bologna more than the barbecue, which I cannot even believe I'm saying, but it was absolutely delicious. It really was, and I am not a bologna fan, and I would have happily eaten a couple more of those sandwiches, <laughs> and the slaw on it was phenomenal. Yes. And you can only get your sides in pint and quart. <laughs> and the so, pint is like this, in case you're curious, I forgot. 
I should know that, but. So we went potato salad and it was the right kind of potato salad, if you know what I'm talking about. No craisins or anything in it. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> oh. Potato salad that you should get. So is the meat go on it? Is that sheet metal? That's why we burn the meat goes over here. Okay. Oh, you build the coals over there? Yeah. Gotcha. And the meat goes right there. Nice. So how long are they on there for? Clear the screen, man. We are headed to Memphis. I have no idea where we're staying. Cheyenne has <laughs> booked another hotel. Um, I'm hoping for no one else's hair. I'm hoping for no one else's hair ties. Um, so we'll give her a second chance. That'll be to, to be determined. Okay. But uh, we get down there. I think it's, I don't think there's going to be dinner involved. I think there's going to no. be a hotel and hang out. Yes. and walk around and yes. burn a few days worth of calories. <laughs> yes. I may find a treadmill, not <laughs> to get on it, but to look at it and feel guilty. Um, Contemplate working out. I should pay attention to where we're going so we'll get there too. Uh, 40 West. No, no, this, uh, this one. This oh. one. Oh, I love nice. when they put the service oh. road right beside the on ramp. Anyway, barbecue at uh, Ellen's is phenomenal and I would go back there again and again and I think Cheyenne would too but like I said I would definitely need that treadmill situation <laughs> to be really serious so oh yeah the other thing that you know a barbecue place is good when all the locals are lined up there and you listen to them order and they know their exact order by heart with the sauce if it's mild or hot or slaw and every single person that came up to the window to order while we were there knew their order by heart. And a lot of them, Helen knew the order already. So it is a pretty incredible place all the way around. It really, really was. 10 out of 10. Yep. All right, um, probably give the full breakdown in the hotel room tonight. <laughs> and our slight food coma state and a couple of drinks. Yes. That could be completely disastrous or highly entertaining. <laughs> we'll find out. Stick around. <laughs>